Wow, is this one overdue. I started this series quite a while ago and originally wrote it as a trilogy. And the last installment was actually posted up last October. Wow, does time ever fly when you're making fun of bass players? So I'd like to start this one off with some advice for guys who are just starting out doing live sound. I've seen this situation happen too many times. You get the PA set up, get everything hooked up, hook up an iPod for some music and nothing happens. And I've seen this mistake happen many, many times. Uh, without bothering to check how the signal is routed through the mixer, the first impulse is to crank the volume up. Nothing happens, check a few more cables, punch a few buttons, turn the volume up again, like that's gonna have any effect on anything. And keep pushing buttons, keep turning up the volume, and some hope that the problem is magically going to fix itself. Now, the kicker here is that eventually you are going to find where the issue is. Whether you have a channel muted or not routed correctly to the power section, when you finally do push the right button and get the signal flowing to where it's supposed to be, this happens. <laughs> Okay, this should be no surprise to anyone who's followed this channel. And good for you guys for not reaching for the volume control. Always find out if there's an issue with the source before cranking things up. And for everyone else out there cursing me right now, just remember at no point did I advise you to turn your volume up, actually advised against it. And now you know why. Now. Instead of being completely pissed off, go have some fun and share this video with your friends. Okay, so to wrap this series up, I've got a few disjointed points I want to bring up about playing live. Rule number 10, Facebook is not promotion. Well, not totally anyway. Let's be realistic. Does anyone even pay attention to Facebook event invitations anymore? I know I don't. I got so many, it would take up too much time just to sort through all of them. Uh, you can post messages on Facebook about your gig, that's cool, but nothing beats the personal touch. Whether it's a private message or a text or a personal invite from a band member to a potential audience member, uh, this does far more good than a blanket Facebook invite. You want people to come to your show, let them know that you really want them there. Help. Phone call is still the best way to promote a show. And don't disregard getting out on the streets and handing out flyers. That method still works great. Rule number 11, sound check is not rehearsal. Just a quick reminder, people, the place to learn your songs and how to play them with your bandmates is at your jam space, not just before the gig. Do your sound engineer a favor. Let them get levels on the mics and get the monitors right. And that's it. Nobody wants to see a full on performance at a sound check. No, really, not even from your band, even though you guys are fucking awesome. Rule number 12, intoxicated performances won't do you any good. This one's kind of a no brainer. Getting wasted or totally baked before a show is generally not a good idea. No matter how many people say, I play better when I'm drunk, uh, there's never been any scientific evidence of any sort to back up that claim. Alcohol is a depressant and it interferes with motor skills. That's the science and you guys can disagree, but as the saying goes, science doesn't give a shit what you believe. If you drink too much before a gig, you're going to have a bad show. Of course, if you're nervous, a small amount of alcohol can calm the nerves and take the edge off. The trick is to not overdo it. Unfortunately, many people don't have the ability to tell the difference between a small amount and shit faced. Just remember your audience paid money to see you. Make sure they get what they paid for. Rule number 13, do not steal from the other bands. Yeah, you know, I really got to advise against that particular strategy. It doesn't matter if someone in another band has a nice piece of gear that you wish you had or that he didn't keep his eye on it. Gear costs money and it's no fun to have your shit stolen. 
A little empathy is a good idea if you're considering taking something that doesn't belong to you. Because if you do get caught, chances are you'll be blackballed from whatever venue you're playing at. And other bands will refuse to play with you. Now, myself personally, I am strictly anti-violence, but some of the other bands you're playing with might not be. You really put your career and your physical well-being in jeopardy if you steal from other musicians. Basically, it's a case of you reap what you sow. Rule number 14, it all comes down to respect. It's really the simplest way to put it. If you want to build a career playing live music, it really comes down to respect. Respect for yourself in terms of putting on the best performance possible and not getting wasted before the show. Respect for the venue in terms of promoting your gig and showing up on time and keeping a professional attitude. And respect for the other bands in terms of helping out and not pretending to be some kind of rock star. Because the truly talented people are humble. And then there's Kanye West. I just killed a man Put my gun up to his head Now he's dead But this does apply to your local scene as well. Uh, for example, back in the mid-2000s on the Windsor scene here, there was this one band that really thought that their shit didn't stink. I don't know what their deal was, they played a lot of local shows, and yeah, they weren't half bad. But that was it. They didn't get a record deal or sell millions or really make any sort of impact on the global market. But these little shits ran around like they were something special. Like they were somehow better than everyone else. And here we are, years later, and the band has gone absolutely nowhere. Broken up, and all anyone can remember about them is how swelled their fucking heads were. Be sure not to leave that kind of legacy. Be remembered for your music. Oh yeah, and fuck bass players. Yeah.